I was still backstage. <laughs> sure. Still learning. Hey, everyone. We'll get started in just a moment. Um, feel free to say hi in the chat. We put a poll uh, just to kind of get yourself used to this new platform. We moved away from our old one. We're now using RM Guild. So you can chat. The chat will be recorded. You can use the QA and upvote each other's questions and then answer the poll. How much money does it take to start streaming? Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, before I go backstage, I want to say welcome to everyone. I think I can toggle the view, but I will stay small um, for now. So welcome to our coach chat about I have a lab. Now what? We were just joking about how this is an interesting title for a webinar, but it was really honestly the question we were trying to answer for you all. So if you have a computer lab, you are in a school and you're like, well, I want to do esports. I want to upgrade my esports. What do I do now? Um, this section of the time will be recorded so you can come back here and watch it. The chat will be recorded. QA will be kept. Once we push you to networking where you can kind of get to know each other, ask Josh some other questions. Um, then that part will not be recorded and the chat will not be saved. So um, just as a heads up on that part, and I will kind of introduce our speaker of the day. So we have Josh from Bytespeed. He got his start in esports in 2016 at the University of Jamestown in North Dakota as its first program director and head coach. After three years of coaching, Josh joined the team at Bytespeed to help lead the Gravity Gaming brand initiative forward. He serves mainly as a resource for new schools looking for guidance on how to start and run their own programs, offering firsthand experience he learned while at UJ. Josh is also an advisory board member of the National Association of Esports Coaches and Directors, NACAD, and extremely active in helping develop the professional training for high school and college coaches. So welcome, Josh. I'm going to let you uh, get started, and I'm going to hop off. Sounds good. Thanks, Melanie. All right. Okay. Well, uh, welcome everyone uh, to I Have a Lab. Now what? Um, you know, the, the, it's a pretty common question that gets asked um, by coaches all over the place when, you know, we've got the initial setup done. You know, maybe we've been playing for a year or two. Things are going great, but I want to go to like the next level of my facility, of my program. Uh, what do I do? Well, I, a really easy answer to that, and sometimes something that happens, you know, right away, sometimes it happens, you know, like I said, a couple years down the road, is getting streaming set up and really taking your broadcast portion of your program um, and amplifying that and building out more opportunities around broadcast. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. What are some of the... Um, kind of necessities to get started, um, some hardware, some software, things like that, uh, and really just kind of give you a, a very basic broad overlay uh, of getting started with streaming. Um, so uh, Melanie already introduced me, but I'll put my contact info on the screen for like two seconds. Um, please feel free if you have questions to throw those in the Q&A or the chat while we're going tonight. Uh, if we don't get to them, please, please, please feel free to reach out uh, directly, either through email, you can call me, you can ch you can text me, you can DM me on Twitter, whatever. Um, uh, I'm super available, would love to talk and answer questions that, that don't get um, answered tonight. So, um, first question, what's in my setup? We're thinking, you know, I, I have this lab, what does that typically look like? Um, chances are it's a PC, uh, you know, a, a super gold standard entry level, you know, common configuration, you know, entry level processor, um, 16 gigs of RAM, you know, we've got an SSD for storage, we've got a, a entry level video card, uh, and a standard power supply. We've got some peripherals, which is typically, you know, your keyboard, mouse, headset, monitor, and we've got some furniture. So, you know, adjustable ergonomic desks and chairs. That's, that's your typical setup. 
uh, and like the typical, um, you know, if, if I had to say, it, you know, my esports station includes, that's probably what you would think of uh, in a normal setup. So what do I need to, to do to take this normal configuration setup, you know, whatever you want to call it, and add some broadcast elements to it? Well, we're going to take this, which is just pretty nice, it's pretty cool, but it's pretty basic, and go to, you know, where, where do I go from here? Going to the next level. So, uh, you know, a, a broadcast studio might look like a number of different things. Um, Bytespeed, we helped Illinois Wesleyan University get their broadcast studio up and running. Um, really, it's a place where talent is on camera. They've got some good high quality microphones, a camera to record them, and then a, a PC to run everything. It's got a couple of different monitors. It's got some of the software installed, but it's, it's not too far removed from, you know, this setup right here. Uh, we're not adding a ton to our normal esports setup, our normal gaming setup, but there are a couple of key considerations that we have to make sure that we take care of. And then we can start looking at, okay, what software do we use? What hardware do I add? Things like that. So um, we want to get to Broadcast Studio. Um, what do I need? And there's going to be like three different categories that we go through um, to kind of do our checklist on, you know, getting to streaming. All right, number one, we're going to make sure that the, the computer, you know, can we actually handle streaming uh, and running a game at the same time? You know, do we have the resources in our hardware that it's going to take to be able to do all of those things at once? After that, we're going to look at streaming software. You know, what are we going to actually use to broadcast our gameplay, our commentary, things like that? Uh, and, you know, what are our, you know, what's the platform we're going to push things to? Um, what other, you know, assets am I going to need uh, to, to get rolling? And then finally, we'll look at streaming hardware. Um, you know, what accessories can we add to, to kind of take like the basic broadcast to something that looks a little bit more professional, has a little bit more elements to it. Uh, and we're gonna kind of go in this in this three-tiered approach. So first and foremost, PC requirements and, and kind of recommendations. And the things we really wanna look at is, you know, can our rig actually handle running a stream streaming software, pulling in multiple inputs, um, handling all of the different assets that we have to load up and, and move around and change on the fly. Uh, and the three things that you really wanna look at are your processor, RAM, and video card. Now this is a, a really big oversimplification of the hardware that you need to look at. But in general, if you have a, a mid-level CPU, something like a, an i7, uh, or better, or if you have like a Ryzen 7 or better, um, those CPUs are more tailored towards multitasking. They're going to be able to handle more of a workload than something like an i5 or an i3 or a Ryzen 5, you know, something that's built more for just like, hey, I'm going to do gaming and I'm going to do it really, really well. Um, we're going to need to add a little bit more resources to our computer to be able to do everything that we want to do at once. Um, RAM is also a thing that will help in this regard. You know, typically you can get away with starting with 16 gigs. That's kind of like the gold standard for gaming, right? And then if you remember last week, we talked about diminishing returns with RAM and as far as gaming performance is concerned. Whereas like, you know, 16 gigs of RAM is gonna be all I need to play. But if I wanna do more, having 32 gigs is, is kind of ideal. And then finally, you know, really looking at your graphics card. Um, you know, for gaming, you know, we've got that nice solid six gig card. It's gonna handle rendering the game super well. It's gonna be able to give us a great experience while we're playing. But if we wanna stream and be able to encode that video and do more things with it, maybe have a couple extra monitors hooked up to it, uh, we might wanna consider looking into a mid or a high level GPU, think like 3060, 3070, somewhere in there. You don't have to have a $2,000 3090 to start streaming. Um, you can get away with something that's more on kind of the mid-range side and, and have a really great experience and, and make sure that everything runs really well. So that's the, the first kind of consideration, the first hardware stuff that we need to look at. Uh, and those, I think, would be a great, um, really quick checklist that you can do uh, before we start worrying about software and, and additional hardware. Uh, just make sure that whatever computer you're going to use, um, it, it kind of will meet those technical requirements. 
Um, typically, uh, when, when you're building out a streaming booth, you really only need one extra computer to handle the streaming. Um, you'll have, you know, your, your, let's take League of Legends, for example. We're going to have our five players. Uh, they're all going to be, you know, sitting at their own stations. They're going to be playing the game. And then uh, station number six, that extra computer, will be used for broadcast. You'll be logged in as a spectator. You'll be uh, you'll have the League of Legends game up and running on your computer through the spectator client. Uh, and then we're also going to have some software running in the background uh, and, and some different things happening. Um, so it's typically you just need one more computer. You don't need like uh, a whole bay of machines uh, to be able to put a really good broadcast together. So next up is software. And really there's, there's two solid options when it comes to streaming software. And we're going to talk about both of them. Um, but it's, you know, what, what are we going to use to actually broadcast our gameplay? Um, you know, OBS Studio is uh, a really awesome, excuse me, free tool. Both of these are actually free, which is great. Um, OBS Studio is, is a really great free product. It's kind of bare bones and what you can do with it. Uh, but really, like once you, you know, can learn the tool and understand it, it's really easy to learn. Um, and you can really do some awesome things with it. And then Streamlabs OBS is kind of like the upgraded version of that. Um, it's got a little bit more that you can do in the form of, you know, um, animations, uh, different effects that you're trying to do. It's a little bit more user friendly. Um, it's got a lot of great tutorials, things like that. But these are the two primary broadcasting softwares that we're going to look at today because number one, they're free. And number two, uh, they're pretty easy and pretty powerful. So um, let's look at OBS Studio first. Um, the other thing that I really like about both of these softwares is that they integrate really easily into YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook, which are like your two, three major platforms that you're going to be pumping your streams out to. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about them in a second. But with OBS Studio, you're getting a very like, um, I, I hate to even call it basic, but it is kind of like a very like streamlined, simple broadcasting tool. Um, so you have the ability to pull different video sources in through your computer, through different accessories that are plugged in, uh, and be able to add those to your, your broadcast uh, and be able to control what goes on screen. So if we look at what I just threw together really, really quick before uh, the, the broadcast today, we'll kind of see like what a normal OBS screen looks like. And I'm going to hide my camera just so that you see all of the buttons um, that are on screen here. But I, I have Hearthstone loaded up as just an, a really quick example just because I could get into the menu pretty quickly. But if you see on the bottom here, this bottom tray of gray uh, boxes, that's what's going to be considered like your, um, they call them panels or, or different sources. Those are the things that you're going to be directly working in. On the far left hand side, you'll see it here where it's called scenes. This would be where the majority of your different layouts are going to live. So right now I just have one up here, but if I added a second one, I could have my camera placed in a different spot and I could switch between the two uh, and quickly be able to change what, what's on screen and what that looks like. Um, scenes are also great if you have multiple games that you want to stream over the course of a season because you can build a preset layout for Hearthstone, for League of Legends, for uh, Smite, for Super Smash Brothers, and, and you can have different assets loaded in um, like the score or the, the webcam size or the placement. Um, you might have other uh, effects on screen that you want to have. And you can preload those into different scenes and then, you know, not have to build it from scratch every time. Uh, OBS will save all of your different scenes over the course of when you're working on it. Uh, and you'll be able to switch between them uh, as easy as it is just clicking, you know, uh, scene one to scene two. And then you can add different, like, transitions in between like if you want it to fade really nice or you could do like screen wipes or different things to kind of just add a little bit more to your broadcast rather than just like a hard cut in the middle here you also see your sources this is where we're actually pulling in all of the different things that you see on screen um, so right here we have the logitech webcam that's uh, just the webcam that i'm using right now actually um, it's uh, a c7 or it's a c270 i think uh, just a really basic $30 Logitech webcam. 
that you just add by clicking add the little plus sign down here. It'll pull up a, a list of different source types. Uh, you could either do video, you could do game captured, you can do audio, you can do text, you can do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, and after kind of walking through a really easy step-by-step, -step, it's just like a drop-down menu, click what's connected to your computer. Um, you can add in, you know, the webcam that you see on screen here. Uh, there's also the text source that we have up in the corner and just put like a score update, you know, something really basic. You can change the font on this. You can change the color um, all within OBS, which is great. Uh, and then, you know, we have the Hearthstone game source, you know, same thing there. Um, you know, we actually are pulling from the game. You're seeing a live feed of what's going on. Uh, and that could be on this computer or it could be on a separate, a separate computer that we're pulling through uh, a spectator client or, you know, a, a capture card that we'll talk about in a little bit here. Um, also with the sources, the cool thing, you could just, uh, you know, hide these if you wanted, or you could lock them in place. And that just, so if I'm clicking on the screen, I don't drag and it moves things around. Um, also there's an audio mixer in here. So all the different audio sources that you're going to add. So right now I have desktop audio. That's a, a basic one. That's always going to be there. So the game sounds that you're hearing in the background, or if I'm, you know, in a discord lobby, I'm going to be able to hear that and add that to my stream so that somebody watching on Twitch or YouTube could hear that as well. And you have a volume control. You can mute it. You can do, you know, different effects, uh, put onto it. There's also the webcam microphone that I can have. Um, there's a, another mic, and then I, you don't see it down here, but I have my HyperX SoloCast um, USB microphone that I'm using. Uh, that too is an audio source, and I can control which ones you hear. Um, already talked about transitions, and then there's also the controls panel. So this is where, at the click of a button, we can start streaming which is super great because in five minutes, you could put together something that looks, you know, it, it's not flashy or, or crazy fancy, but we have enough on screen to where if I hit start streaming, you could hear me with the audio tracks in here. You can see me with the Logitech webcam that's just USB connected to my PC and you can see the game. And if I wanted to, I could update this score and I could update all of this on the fly while I'm live but it's super easy to get the basics set up and then, you know, at the click of a button, push that out to my platform of choice. Uh, OBS is also great because you can record stuff if you don't necessarily want to stream, but you want to record a video or uh, a VOD review that you want to push to your players or something like that. Uh, if I just click start recording here, um, it would record straight to my hard drive. I uh, just, throws it into the videos folder on your machine and it's going to record everything that's on screen here. Um, so if I live edit this, like I would, if I was streaming, it's also going to record those changes in the recording and then I'll be able to watch that back. The recording and the, and the stream, you will only see this part up here. So you don't, you don't actually see any of this, uh, any of your trays or your tools on the stream. Uh, there's also uh, a virtual camera that you can use, studio mode, other settings, etc. So that that's OBS. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. It's pretty. Again, I hate to say limited, but um, it it does have kind of like the basic flavors to it. Uh, if we move on to Streamlabs OBS, which is kind of like the 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 upgraded version of of OBS Studio. Um, the biggest thing with Streamlabs is you just get a ton more functionality and you get a lot more of the presets and the tutorials and, and a little bit more power and what you could put on screen. So, you know, I went through and I kind of created a brand new account so I could walk you through this because if, if I was to tell anybody to start streaming, you know, tomorrow, Streamlabs OBS is the program that I would choose. So, for all of you watching, if you're curious about getting started and you, you have no idea what you're going to do or how you're going to do it, use Streamlabs OBS. It's a free download. You can start with a free version. There is a paid version as well that gives you some more tools. But you can start for free right now. And the first thing that you're going to do is connect your, your platform of choice. So I, the first prompt when you load up a brand new account is, you know, connect it to your to your Twitch account or your YouTube account or your Facebook account. Um, Twitch is 
by far and large the the most popular platform out there. There are quite a few people who will stream to YouTube, uh, which is also great if you want to like save recordings or upload videos to your YouTube channel. Um, lots of great functionality there. And then Facebook gaming is obviously growing, uh, but it's it's kind of like the third option on the list. So it, for Twitch, super easy. I click the purple button and it pops up this this pop-up box right here. I can log in with my username and password. Uh, and then we get to already setting up my microphone and my webcam. So without even getting into the actual software itself, it's already helping you set things up. So with just a, a nice little drop down, I can do uh, my webcam. I can, I can choose that. Uh, I can put a preset effect right on it. And I can add my, my microphone right away as well. So in the account setup, in just getting started, uh, you can set up a lot of the things already and have sources loaded uh, so that setting up your stream is super easy. Um, next up, you get to add a theme, which is not something that OBS Studio has, but Streamlabs does include. So they have like six super basic um, kind of like preset themes that will give you assets for your for your stream right away. So a webcam frame, uh, a spot for your your uh, Twitch chat, uh, a spot for the latest follower or sub. Um, so it's already giving you some things that you could see on screen, kind of like this, uh, the, the green frame here. And also like different sources and scenes that you can have as like your title screen or, um, you know, maybe it's a, a game screen like this, but also we want like a full webcam sc um, screen or something like that. So uh, cool added feature of using Streamlabs, um, uh, just getting a theme right off the bat, not having to pay any money, but also getting to kind of like zhuzh up your stream a little bit. Uh, and then once we pick our theme, we're, we're loaded into a very similar dashboard uh, as the other program, but this is the Streamlabs version. So again, you see your stream preview right up here. Um, it's, our, it's got the theme preloaded. So it's got my, my couple of uh, highlights up top for followers and subs and, and things like that, donations. Uh, it's got two webcam frame options that we can go in and, and select or use. Uh, just kind of extra little fun stuff that we can have. But then it's the same kind of stuff down here. It's uh, my different source or scenes, excuse me. So like a starting soon that, you know, it just says, you know, stream is starting soon, but it's already got that theme applied to it. Uh, the main screen that we have right here, a be right back an intermission and ending soon, social media. That's all already preloaded by choosing the theme. And it's just kind of work that's already pre-done for you. And then we have our sources, same as, as OBS Studio. Uh, it has the webcam stuff already and then the event bar, which is up here. And I'll show you what it looks like to add sources in a second. And then we have our mixer. So very similar controls. We have our, our stats down here and the go live button, a record button. Very, very similar, but also just, you know, with a little bit extra um, already added integration. Uh, so to add a source, you know, we just click this little plus sign, same as before. Uh, and then it'll actually pop up a really awesome dialog box that shows you different um, standard sources that we can add and then widgets, which are really cool effects that you can have on screen that go beyond just like, hey, I'm adding a webcam to my stream. Um, so, you know, if we're gonna add, say, I, I'm gonna take you through adding a webcam. So, you know, if we add through, a, you know, another source, we wanna go down here and say, okay, I wanna add a media source or a window capture or a video capture device. Hey, that sounds like a webcam. What happens if we just click that? All of a sudden now we get my face again. Um, and, and it gives you sizing right there. It gives you the, uh, the source popped in down here. I can order this within uh, my sources bar. If I wanted to add it to a folder, I could. Just gives you a little bit more flexibility in how you're organizing things. Um, the, the order actually matters here in the middle um, on what is on top of the screen. So if I pulled the webcam below the webcams folder here where these uh, borders are, the borders would sit on top of that webcam and actually give me a better frame. 
Whereas like if I just dragged myself over here, I'd probably be covering up the nice blue asset that we already have loaded in. Um, so super easy, walks you through it. Um, and then kind of fast forwarding a little bit, adding in some other sources. I've got Hearthstone loaded up again. I moved myself, uh, you see below the webcams folder. So my webcam uh, is underneath the nice blue bar and, and box that we have. Um, I've got Hearthstone at the very bottom so that my webcam's on top. Uh, and then I have a, a um, actually this is a widget for your chat that is uh, just, I just loaded in. So you have the chat box on top here. So if somebody was typing in chat on my screen, on my stream, that, you know, messages would pop up on screen here too. And people watching could, could see that on screen if they were in full screen mode and couldn't see the chat or something like that. Um, so very, very similar, but also just has a lot more power to it right off the bat. Um, so which platform are we going to use? Um, this is a, an important question. Um, and like I said, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook are kind of like the common um, choices for, for you know, where we're going to pump our video out to. Uh, Twitch is by far the most popular. It's used for professional college. Um, it's used for high school esports. It's used for you know, individual streamers out there. It, it's huge. YouTube is uh, another great option, like I mentioned, um, just because it has some, some more built-in um, features if you're going to record video or save it to your YouTube channel. Um, I also think that the ad preferences on YouTube, once you get to a point where you can monetize your content, I think the ads on YouTube are a little bit easier to use just because it's the Google ad platform. Um, whereas Twitch is a little bit more clunky and, and something to think about is, you know, do I have the ability to control what ads go on my stream? With YouTube, you've, you've got a little bit more control there. And then Facebook is, is uh, growing as far as the streaming platform is concerned. Um, but I would say like 99% of the time you're going to choose Twitch. Um, and then, you know, like I mentioned before, all three of these platforms have great integration with Streamlabs. But a lot of the presets and the assets that they already give you, a lot of the tools they already give you with Streamlabs work really, really great with Twitch. Um, and then, like I said, each has their own pros and cons. Um, and it's kind of up to you as the school to decide which one you're going to use. Uh, most of the time, you're going to be Twitch. If not, you're probably going to use YouTube. Uh, okay, and then finally, uh, getting into accessories and some more hardware uh, as far as like things that I can add to my station uh, to be able to really take, you know, the great software that we have and then be able to, to make it sound better, look better, uh, and just kind of overall give me more that I can do within this, this awesome platform. So, um, you know, what are those extra things that I can add that will be beneficial to my stream. Cameras, absolutely. You know, we're, we'll talk about webcam versus DSLR. Both are great uh, and for different reasons. Um, lighting is huge uh, and a super cost-effective way to make things look better is to have better lighting. Uh, microphones, you know, a couple different types, a couple different price points there. Capture cards, being able to grab more video feeds from different sources, uh, and then Stream Deck's kind of tying it all together and really giving you some power uh, on the back end about what we're doing on stream. So let's talk about cameras. Um, a webcam is not necessary to get started for streaming. There is no reason why you can't have your, your Hearthstone game on screen and just have the video gone. Maybe you don't want your students' faces on stream. Maybe you uh, don't have the equipment laying around, or your PC just you know doesn't want to uh, doesn't have the ability to connect enough accessories to it. A webcam you can leave off no problem. In fact, for a lot of esports that are a little bit faster in the action department, um, it doesn't make sense to have a webcam on. So for like League of Legends or for uh, Overwatch or something like that that's faster paced and we're going to be switching perspectives a lot, 
I, maybe I don't want to switch between five different players and have five different webcams on. Or maybe I just want one and it's the casters or the student broadcasters that are working on a station uh, and they're the only ones that I want on camera and, and it's not going to change. Um, you can get away with doing things super low tech. I, I would say that the camera that I'm using has pretty good video quality, right? That's a $30 webcam. It's the Logitech C270 uh, and it's the one right here on screen not super fancy, but it looks good. And I stream with this at home all the time. I also use it for video calls. I use it for, you know, everything that requires video. It's just a simple $30 webcam to get started. You know, kind of the next step up is a higher definition webcam. So like the C920 from Logitech, this has better resolution, um, better overall picture quality, it's going to be able to um, give you a little bit better depth of field uh, and things like that. It's going to overall be a better product, but we're still talking like a hundred, uh, hundred and twenty dollars, you know, in that range for a webcam. Not too bad, not too bad. Oftentimes, you can get away with just a, a pretty decent webcam uh, to get started, and, and you know, you are going to be a little limited in the in the quality and also the range of where you can have that webcam plugged into. You know, and, uh, for building out like a broadcast studio, um, you know that that webcam has got to be plugged into the computer that's running the broadcast. So if you wanted to separate those two out, you might not have the ability to do that. Um, however. It's a great cheap way to get into broadcasting and, and have a camera on screen. DSLR, um, there are some definite benefits to running a higher end camera, but this is something that you can look at far down the road. Um, you know, it's going to require a capture card. It's going to require, um, you know, a little bit more hardware to make it be able to connect to your PC and actually get that video feed from the camera onto the screen. Um, but you're going to have higher quality images. You know, you're going to have uh, a bigger range of what you can capture. You might be able to run, uh, you know, a, a 50 foot HDMI cord across to a different room and have a totally different broadcast setup running um, than the control center where you have the camera or the, the PC setup. Um, so there, there's definitely benefits to it. Um, you know, camera prices are all over the map, but uh, in general, it's going to be a little bit more than that webcam option. Um, so it's something to shoot for. Definitely don't have to start with uh, a DSLR camera. Uh, next up is lighting. Um, this is again, like one of the fastest, cheapest ways to make your broadcast look better is to get better lighting. Uh, and there's a couple of different kind of styles that you can use. And I'll hide my camera here for a second, just so that you can see, um, whoops, that was the screen share. I am sorry about that. Here we go. Um, there we go. Uh, so there's three different kinds of lights that I would encourage you to look into. One is a ring light. That's going to be this top guy here. Uh, if you notice, it's got a little nub right in the middle of the ring light, and that's where you can connect the camera to. So the, the camera that you're going to actually use for your broadcast, whether it's a, uh, a webcam or a DSLR, um, it can sit right in the middle of this and have the benefit of all of this light shining in a centralized spot onto somebody's face or onto a background. Um, these are the most common, uh, like what I'll say, streamer lights um, and, and are a great non-expensive way uh, of making your broadcast look brighter. Lighting up somebody's face uh, can do wonders to the, the quality of what's on screen. Um, and then you want to balance that out with extra lighting. Um, you know, there, there are people who go to school for lighting and it's crazy. I, I was a mass communications major. And for a brief second, I worked in like TV studio setup uh, while we were in college. And um, just the, the amount of stuff that goes into lighting, uh, just a person, it's crazy. Um, so a ring light is a great start. It's, it's oftentimes the first thing that you're going to look at getting. Uh, because it's going to do the most uh, for, for brightening up your subject. Next would be a key light. These are often like smaller lights placed off to the side uh, or below or behind somebody. That'll uh, They're used primarily to get rid of shadows. So if you have, um, you know, for me, 
I'm gonna turn my camera back on for a second here. Uh, I'm sitting up against a wall here. And if I had a, a ring light on, which I do have one here above my computer, I can turn that on and all of a sudden you start seeing a little bit more reflection in the background. My shadows got worse behind me. It's not a very powerful ring light, but you kind of already see like, hey, I've got stuff going on behind me. Um, to get rid of that, we would use a key light to be able to fill in the shadows and make kind of the, the picture overall a little bit more clear. And then finally, uh, you get your, your little ring or your little string LED lights, uh, light strips. These are also awesome, um, cheap ways to add to a broadcast setup. Um, LED string lights or, or, or strip lights, you can customize the color, you can customize the brightness, um, you can kind of either, you know, a lot of times they have like uh, like 3M command tape kind of stuff on the back so that you can stick them to a wall uh, or underneath a desk or around a, a frame like I have here in the back. I could put LED strips around that and make it look uh, or brighten up in a certain color. Uh, so they, they really are like an accent light and you wouldn't be using like an LED strip to light up a, a person but you can add to your broadcast setup and really do some cool things with Stream Decks, which we'll talk about in a second or in, in a little bit. Um, but kind of the, the three of these lighting solutions will work together to make whoever's on camera look more presentable, to be honest with you. Uh, it, it really does a lot when you can add light to a broadcast and this doesn't have to be super expensive. I mean, you can buy LED strips for five bucks at Menards uh, and a key light and a ring light, you know, these are Elgato, so they're a little bit more expensive, but like 50 to 100 bucks, you could have a really good uh, kind of light setup for your streaming setup. Uh, and then again, this is kind of like how a, a typical broadcast setup would look. You can see the key light here. It's off to the side uh, and they're using more of like a, a I, I would say this key light is, there's definitely a second one on the on the left side here. Uh, just with how bright this and evenly lit this stage is. Um, but you kind of get an idea of what things would look like uh, mounted around your setup. So you've got your camera in the middle. If they had a ring light, that ring light would be around the DSLR. And then the key light might be a little farther off. But it looks like they're using a key light here as like the main light source. And like I said, there's probably a second one over here based on how evenly the chair is lit and how bright this overall setup is. They also have an LED strip behind the desk, uh, also shining some bright white light and making the, the overall scene a little bit brighter. Uh, next up is microphones. So microphones are something that, um, you know, sound is super important in a broadcast. Uh, I'm using actually this microphone here, the HyperX SoloCast. Um, just the ability to have a little bit of a filter on a microphone uh, and getting a little bit more quality audio, especially if you're having somebody shout cast or, or commentate over the top of a video for like a voiceover. Um, having a good microphone is, is definitely something that will make the video overall better because it'll sound better and it'll, it'll be more engaging. Um, USB microphones are a great cheap way to kind of take your headset microphone to the next level. Um, that being said, you can absolutely start broadcasting without external microphones. You can use, you know, the mic that's already attached to uh, a good gaming headset as, uh, you know, your, your starting microphone. Um, I've got here a, a Corsair headset that has, you know, just a, a normal USB, you know, connector uh, and a, a pretty decent mic that's on a boom right on the side of the headset. And for a long time, that's all I used. Uh, and, you know, it sounded fine. But when I, I plugged in the solo cast, uh, you know, when I got it, my friends in the Discord call immediately were like, hey, you sound different. And it's because I have a, a more dedicated audio source um, than something that's connected to, you know, a headset or another peripheral or like a, a webcam microphone or something like that. Um, I, you know, Philip mentions in the chat here uh, a pretty good affordable mic also. 
Um, the, a couple of different options here uh, from Sure. Yeah, Sure is a, a great uh, microphone manufacturer. Um, I just pulled a couple off of uh, off of the web. Um, the Solocast because I have it here, uh, and I, I think it was like fifty or sixty dollars at Best Buy. Um, and then just a, a really kind of basic XLR microphone. This one's from Toner. Um, Yeti Blue is uh, another awesome option for USB. Um, the biggest difference is the connection type. Um, I, an XLR, you can kind of think of it as like what people use in like a radio booth or a TV station or like your professional audio sources. Um, the, the connection type will need to go through a mixer or, or some kind of external interface before it can connect to your PC. Uh, because your, your your normal computer is not going to have a place for an XLR plug to go into, uh, you know, the back of the computer to actually capture that audio. So that's the biggest deal. Um, they're going to require that extra interface. These are not all the time, but a lot of the time, a little bit higher quality microphones. Um, you know, and, and you know, the sound quality is going to be noticeable for either of these from, like I said, your basic headset mic or, or your webcam microphone. Um, next up is capture cards. So, uh, we've talked a lot about like pulling in video sources and if you're going to be doing more than one, uh, or more than one computer, I should say, uh, or more than one, you know, audio source or video source, uh, capture cards are a great way to add more to your, your, you know, suite of sources that you can add to uh, a Streamlabs. Uh, but they also help fill a role for devices that you want to stream from that aren't connected to your computer directly. So there's two different kinds, internal and external. Both, you know, form the, give the same functions. They just are connected to your PC in a little different ways. Um, internal capture cards are connected directly to a PCIe lane on your motherboard. So if you remember last week when we talked about different sizes of motherboards and different PCIe lanes, um, this is a great application for that to be able to plug in an extra accessory directly to your computer. And then I can feed in my HDMI in and outs directly into my, into my PC. I don't have to worry about, you know, do I have extra ports to plug into on the graphics card or uh, on the motherboard you know, directly, things like that. So external or internal capture cards are awesome if you have the space on your motherboard. And these are um, typically will run at a little, a little higher performance than your external ones. Um, external, they're typically connected to your PC with a USB along with an HDMI and often need uh, an external power source too, uh, in some cases. Um, could have uh, PC or power through that USB. Um, but sometimes they need, uh, depending on what kind of capture card you're using, you might have like a small little power adapter that'll come with it. Um, some will take audio in a different form or you could pump audio through the HDMI. Um, both of these are great, awesome solutions. I think like the biggest uh, kind of use case that people would be familiar with is connecting a console to a computer and being able to stream. So if you have Super Smash Brothers teams, you know, that's got to be played on uh, a Nintendo Switch, but you can't really stream directly from a Switch. Well, a way to be able to get that Switch video, yeah, and the, and the game capture of what's happening on screen to your PC and then to Twitch would be through a capture card. So you'd connect the HDMI from the Switch into a capture card and the capture card into your PC, and then all of a sudden, now I'm playing uh, and able to broadcast that that video source uh, from the switch all the way into my computer and then out to, to the internet. Um, capture cards, like I said before, also a way to get your DSLR video uh, from the camera actually back to the computer through an HDMI, um, whether that's uh, an HDMI mini or a full size one, depending on the size of your camera. That's often how we get um, video from uh, that device into our PC to be able to use as a webcam or, or something similar like that. Uh, so capture cards are great. They can be used for 
video or audio uh, and are super important if you want to do more than, you know, just like what's on board in your computer or like the USB connections that you have hooked up. Um, there are ways, you know, if like I, I, an extreme example of using capture cards is if you were going to do, excuse me, a, a, a set up to where I had multiple stations. So like player A, player B, player C, and I wanted to take all of their video, webcams and desktop videos, all the way back into an HDMI splitter. Yep, right, like Philip said, and then back into a PC. Um, as far as HDMI splitters go, um, I don't really have a good recommendation for it. Um, you know, getting a, a higher end capture card that can handle multiple uh, HDMI inputs would be good. Um, there are a couple of different options as far as, um, HDMI splitters out there. I would have to really like look into it. Um, but you can find some at like Best Buy or Walmart. Um, you know, there's a ton of different brands out there. Rocket Fish is not necessarily a terrible brand to look into. Um, I'm just looking here. Philips has a one that's not super expensive. Um, I would just hunt around. I haven't really used uh, any that I, I you know, I, I haven't had a bad experience with it. Um, the one thing that I will caution you with is the more inputs that you're gonna try and get into a splitter and then back into a PC for streaming, the more beef that that main streaming computer is gonna need to have. Um, being able to, actually process and encode and handle video, especially video from multiple different computers is going to put a lot of strain on the desktop that's streaming. Um, one of the things that we experimented with when I was at Jamestown uh, at the college that I coached at was using um, a, a software called NDI. Uh, and it was um, video capture for um, PCs that were on the same network without the need for capture cards and, and cords running all over the place and things like that, or having multiple things, you know, into the back of one single video card. Uh, NDI is a, a really cool technology. Uh, it is also pretty resource intensive. Um, so it works great for like slower games like Hearthstone, but not super great for like Overwatch and things like that. Um, so I, I would just kind of see what you're hoping to do as far as the number of HDMI inputs that you want, you know, if a splitter is going to work, if your PC is strong enough to handle it. Or the other thing that I would recommend doing is, is you know, kind of dialing it back a little bit and having a spectator camera in game. So whether it's Overwatch or, or League of Legends or what have you, you know, actually having that extra account in the game watching from that spectator perspective that's going to move around and be able to grab multiple viewpoints and then having one hdmi camera for your kind for your casters or, or spectators like that um you know i i would have to do a little bit more research into video splitters or hdmi splitters in general to be able to have uh, a good recommendation for for a switcher um, but there's a lot of like really high end video equipment out there that you can look into or kind of um, those cheaper 30 to $50 HDMI splitters. Uh, and then the last thing that we're going to talk about today is stream decks. Um, these are cool accessories to be able to really just give you, um, you know, a lot of customization with your stream. Um, you know, a stream deck is essentially a video switcher or like a, a pre-programmable, um, it's like a queue that you can, you know, have selected into hardware. Uh, and all of these different buttons that you see on screen will have a different effect that triggers when you press that button. So it could be, you know, switching from uh, camera one to camera two or it could be switching from, uh, you know, it could be adding an effect on screen that you have preloaded, like an audio effect that you're gonna trigger at certain times. Like uh, I'm gonna click this button and it's gonna have an air horn go off. Um, it could be um, setting up your stream, your, uh, stream transitions, um, like I showed you kind of in, in OBS to be able to switch from one layout to the next 
on screen, you could use a stream deck for that. Um, you could do lighting presets with, with a stream deck, which I think is one of the coolest things is all of that cool led lighting that you're going to put around your stream setup or around your broadcast booth and the different colors that you can have. You could have a stream deck preset to go from blue to red or to have a whole different lighting effect altogether. Uh, and it's just a cool little added accessory that can give you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more, um, kind of quick programmable effects. Uh, and they're really cheap. I think like 120 bucks for the small one. Uh, and it's, it's a really cool and powerful tool to, to kind of finish out your broadcast station. And that's all I got you guys. Um, that, you know, as far as stuff to share, uh, for the presentation, you know, obviously we can answer questions or, or do other things um, to, to keep the, the session going, uh, or we can jump into the networking stuff. But that really kind of gives you a, a broad, generic overview of how to take a normal, you know, gaming setup and add pretty, you know, pretty cheaply, you know, go from that gaming setup to a streaming setup. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of little dollar amounts here and there. Uh, and the best part about it is that streaming software is free. So even if you don't have a microphone, even if you don't have uh, a webcam, you can pull in a game source and desktop audio and pump it out to the internet and be able to start streaming and have people in your school, your, your kids' families, booster clubs, other schools be able to watch your content. Uh, and start interacting with your chat and, and with your stream and with your team. So um, if there's any other questions, you know, please feel free to throw them in here. I think we've got a couple here that we can go and look at. Um, first question in the Q&A is, uh, do you think streaming is important for a program that is brand new from Adam? Um, I, I don't think it should be your priority when you're just getting started. Um, it is an awesome thing to, to add once you kind of get your feet wet and, and you get settled, but it's by no means a requirement. Um, that being said, the, the cool thing with esports is that you can have a lot of kids participating in different ways with your program. You know, you can have your five starters for game X, but what do I do with the other kids that are a part of my team? You know, broadcasting and, and streaming is a great way to get them involved, have them doing something at practice or, or during games um, where they might not get playing time, but they can still be participating. So what is, is it a necessity? Is it essential? No. Is it an awesome addition that you can add to your program? Yes. Um, next question is easy way to split the audio so I can hear my players, but it doesn't send to the stream. Um, so the best way to do that is to add multiple audio sources in, uh, in Streamlabs or in, in OBS studio. Uh, and then you can mute those to what's getting pumped out to the stream, but you can still hear them while they are, you know, you know, in Discord. Uh, you know, if you're if you're sitting at the streaming computer, you can still hear all of that, but you can mute which ones are getting actually pumped out to the stream. Um, you will have to probably mute the desktop audio uh, or have Discord running um, on a different application or, or you know. But the tough part is you'll have to pull in game audio as well from whatever game that you're running uh, so that you can hear that, but it's not like, hey, I hear everything else going on in the background. Uh, also, is it possible to send two different streams to Twitch and YouTube? Um, I haven't done it myself, but it is possible. Um, you, uh, I, I wouldn't even know uh, what that looks like within each program, but I do know that you can you can stream to multiple sources. Uh, you might have to have um, two different software instances running at the same time, which might get a little weird. Because um, as far as I know, like going live on OBS is just going to take you to one. But if you have like OBS running and, and uh, another OBS running or another dashboard running, you should be able to, to send that out. Uh, anything I need to keep in mind when streaming from consoles, 
uh, kind of what we just kind of covered with the capture card. Um, yeah, a console is more than likely going to need uh, some way to capture the video and the audio and send it to a computer. And that's typically a capture card that's plugged into your computer. Um, there are ways through like, I know like Xboxes have like a go live feature. I think PlayStation's do now too. Um, but like for Super Smash Brothers, which is arguably the most popular esport on a console in K-12, um, the Nintendo Switch has no functionality to get that video live. So you're going to need a capture card. So all great questions. Um, you know, would love to, to keep that discussion going if anybody has anything else. Uh, and if not, I just want to say thanks for having me again this week. Um, streaming is a really cool way to, um, you know, get your feet wet with some technology that you might not get to use on a daily basis. It's pretty easy to get started, uh, but it's it's definitely something that, like, you can sink tons and tons of time into creating assets and tweaking your layouts and doing all these things. Uh, and you could really, like, take, you know, something that looks pretty basic and get it to look really professional uh, with just some good elbow grease. So. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh, for going over that. I know I learned a lot. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to end this session and then it'll bump you to a networking session and you'll have to click. We learned this last week. You have to like click in the, on the circle that you want to join. Um, forgot to tell people that last week. So um, if you want to stay, ask your questions, you can hop on and ask Josh directly, or you can talk to each other about what you're doing, what you're planning on doing. It's a great moment to just kind of get to know each other, connect, and then go on with your day. So here we go. I'm going to hit end, and we're going to go to networking.